Good morning. Today, let's discuss being honest with yourself. Are you honest to and with yourself? You know, there's kind of a difference there, but let me explain. Are you being true to yourself? Are you having a problem getting over maybe being hurt? Are you having a problem overcoming, overcoming some mistakes that you regret and they are haunting you? I'm going to share, share a, a few principles from A Course in Miracles that helps us to understand more clearly about you know, when realizing the truth within you so you can move on and live the life that you want. Hey everyone, James Nussbaumer, and thank you this morning, bright and early, joining me for a Better Life podcast. And I want to go on about being true to yourself means understanding, wouldn't you agree? It means understanding that sometimes you make good decisions, but then sometimes you make some not so good choices. <laughs> and I'm a perfect example of that, for those of you that know my story. But sometimes you are true to yourself, but on the other hand, sometimes you have to just start overcoming the mistake so you can begin to get over the hurt that's going on within you. And, you know, even if it's your golfing game, if you are a golfer, because I am, you know, and you're having a, uh, your golfing mental game is out of whack. And, you know, I, I had always like to say, oh, if that's the case, and I'm sorry for you, because we've all been through that. But anyways, my point is, let's go deep into your inner self today. The you that are capable of reaching as, I'm talking about the you with a capital Y, capital Y-O-U. Capitalize when I capitalize letters and uh, letters of the alphabet in my in all my writings. That's to you know give you an indication of divinity. You know I am with you and I totally understand how the world seems to help us. You know slip into a mode of having to overcome mistakes and you know pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. We may say. Um, you know, that's why I urge you to learn how to do mindfulness meditation. If you read my blog articles and, and my books, I, I totally believe in mindfulness meditation because it gets you to that alpha state where you learn how to go within yourself and begin to creating what it is you really want to do. And if you're confused about that, then it enables you to ask questions and listen for the answer. You know, I mean, don't forget that it takes a humble heart. I'm seriously mean that. It does take a humble heart to be honest to yourself and begin letting go of those error, errors in life that we make. Because as humans, we are ego-based. And that means ego-based means a foundation of fear and doubt. And as humans, we will make mistakes naturally errors that we can have undone to undo and that's the power of true forgiveness but what i mean is i mean being true to yourself and being who you truly are in a world even if it is your golf game as i had said even if it's even if it's you're having a problem on the how you're gripping the golf club and all these things for golfers that might be listening that confuse you it just gets you so upset sometimes it's better off to you know take a week or so off and let all that nasty stuff settle down and kind of fade away and it does you know a course in miracles has a great principle that says when truth is realized the hearts that are pure and innocent defend true perception instead of defending themselves against it. You know, that's pretty profound there uh, because I'll explain here what I mean, what the Course is trying to say. And as I explain in book one of my series called The Master of Everything, subtitle, A Story of Mankind in the World of Illusion We Call Life, I dive into by understanding the lesson of the atonement which the Course in Miracles teaches us was, or teaches us about, or we can say at one mint, A-T dash O-N-E dash mint, at one mint, meaning the atonement. 
we've been misled along the way about what the atonement really is. It just really means going back to our inner self and being one with our source, which is our creator. However you do, you know, choose to name him, and I go along with God, which is easy because I was raised on that, and eh, I discussed that in my books. But anyways, you know, you allow yourself to start being true to yourself and will not miscreate when you start awakening to what your true heart is calling for. Sometimes we say that's your true calling. Well, you know, now I mean this. Um, let me say that this is what the Bible, I would say, really means without ego-based interpretations and distortions from the past till today when it says, when the Bible says, when he shall appear or be perceived, we shall be like him or we shall see him as he is. But you know what? When you have distorted views, though, you need to correct them to withdraw your faith in them by investing it only into being honest with yourself and what is true to your heart so you do not get into a situation of getting over and trying to heal from hurt. So how simple can that be? You know, no one can make an untruth become uh, true. You can't. You can't make a falsity become true when you are being true to yourself. And you need not have to share this with anyone about the, the, the truths that are within you or the untruths that you're trying to get over. No, but no one can make an untruth become true when you are being true to yourself is what I'm trying to say. And that is so easy and simple. It's first grade language. As long as you're being true to yourself. But no one can, you know, well, I only add about, let me back up and say about the, for many of you that don't know anything about the game of golf, that's okay. But I only add about the golf mental game because all of my life, I have pursued this uh, great and humbling, believe me, it's humbling sport, and I know how to, excuse me, how to relate to being on top of your game in life, we could say. I can say golf has taught me that. Another sip of coffee, please. But if you are willing to accept what is true and everything that you perceive then you will let it be true for you. Now, you notice what I, I noticed what I said, everything you perceive, you will let it be true for you. And I don't think about that for a moment, because let me say that, let me add, <clears throat> truth overcomes all errors, and those who live in error and emptiness can never find lasting peace. A Course in Miracles also adds this principle that I have interpreted, so I'm not quoting it exactly from the Course, but ba basically the Course in Miracles is, is teaching us through this principle, if you can perceive truly that you are canceling misperceptions in yourself and in others, you will be seeing yourself as well as others for what and who they truly are. I just love that. Don't you? My gosh, how simple is that? That kind of goes along with the golden rule, doesn't it? But you know, when we can see the truth in others as the truth within ourselves, can't we see something to their inner core that we miss when we're not living by truth? All right, let me, let me fast forward a little bit and get going here. But by doing this, you are, letting, you are letting others know that you see them for who they are from the heart, regardless of any brave front that smiles fictitiously. What I mean, if you're talking with someone who's been a good friend of yours for a long time and he's, he or she is slipping up with uh, trying to just you know pass along some untruths because they're hiding their own errors or something, well, you can silently and humbly just 
you know, forgive them and let them speak because maybe they're just trying to get that off their chest rather than trying to prove them wrong. Let them speak. They will later in their own time realize that, you know, I wasn't saying the truth to him the other day about what, but at least he listened to me. I was able to bend his ear. You know, in book two of my series called Mastering Your Own Spiritual Freedom, subtitle Lessons from a Course in Miracles, you know, I talk about that. I, I feel that we accomplish that your acceptance of being true to yourself and to be honest to yourself, even with the golf mental game, we can say. Uh, and I just like, you know, what I've learned through the game of golf, like I had said, is a great parallel with everything that we're up against in life. But being honest with yourself allows everyone, all of us to accept it, to accept ourselves for what we are and make the decision to heal and to cross over the bridge over to what A Course in Miracles calls right mindedness. And that is where your own golf mental game comes together, so to speak, thereby including a miracle. Right-mindedness just means that you're feeling something good within you, spirit talking to you, that you know is truthful. And when you want to share that with someone, whether it's through your writing like I do and speaking, or just you want to share some good things with a good friend because you feel something really coming through to you in your heart that's just honest and true and humble, that's right-mindedness. But, you know, when I, a little bit ago, I had mentioned about if you're talking with someone who's in a bad frame of mind and have some hard things going on in life and they're talking untruths, well, that's what we, what we'd be call uh, talking from wrong-mindedness, which we all have in us because it's a psychosis. It's a neurosis, we can say that we all have. But to travel over the bridge from wrong-mindedness to right-minded to right-mindedness. In other words, traveling over the bridge to where all we do is listen to, listen to spirit and act from what spirit tells us to do. That cannot be forced. It's a natural thing. It just simply has to flow or it has to just occur naturally. You know, no one forces them to know I'll add for anybody that knows a golf, uh, you can't force a golf swing. So, uh, but do you truly know God? And I use God as, as our creator. Do you truly know God as a, you know, as a, a beneficent order of all things. In other words, our source of life. So by now, you know, you should be sensing, as you're listening to me intently, if you are, you should be sensing God, Him, with a capital H, as the thought, with a capital T, that causes everything to happen without human conscious control. There's a difference between, there's a big, revolu a big revolution going on right now, which is great, about the conscious awareness we're all, but it's not human consciousness. The conscious awareness breakthrough, the awakening we're all experiencing in this world has nothing to do with human consciousness. It's that we're realizing that human consciousness is not real. We're tapping into our real consciousness behind the human body. And those are where the explosions of things are happening with all the, technical advancements and everything that we're experiencing now in the world and have been for generations. It's just now we're at a different point from where we were years ago, but it's been ongoing. You know, much of the world's populace questions and doubts, you know, are thereby, you know, the doubts are more or less kind of like we're questioning our truths and our untruths only because we are afraid of our true potential of the truth within us. If we live our life this way, we become incapable of knowledge and easily overcoming mistakes because we perceive only for personal gain and not for love of the whole, W-H-O-L-E, 
of the whole, which means our interconnectedness with everyone. Sip of coffee, please. Excuse me. So in other words, our physical body does not get involved with our perceptions, often causing, well, it does not get involved with our right-minded perceptions, but it gets involved in our wrong-minded perceptions, often causing stress, and even over our golf mental game. <laughs> I got to throw golf in there because it's been such a lesson for my life. And, uh, even the professional golfers on tour, if they're listening to me right now, would agree with what I'm saying. But the body is at work every moment and does respond to these stresses and even these, these, these excitements we have that we experience. Like when we play a great golf game and, you know, break, uh, break the course record or break our own record or, or beat our golfing pal that we're rivals with, uh, you know, that day and, and just play tremendously. So my point is we do understand and are in awe of the fact that our body, you know, is a brilliance of design. It's an array of mechanisms and efficiency. Our human efforts have never really begun to match. Our heart expands and contracts, especially when we are up against the wall pumping blood to microscopic cells that feed us and make our hair grow and, and, and make our hair stand up and we feel like pulling our hair out when we're facing adversity. But you know, the planet revolves around the sun. Seeds become flowers. Embryos become babies. And all with no help from us. All this movement is built into a natural system of being true to yourself and you and I are each an integral part of that system. I hope you enjoyed this today. I hope it gives you great seeds or food for thought to help you always be living according to your true free will in the truth that is within you, regardless of what the naysayers may say. Hey, please support my work. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're at YouTube listening to this right now, please click right now on subscribe. Right now as you're listening to me, click on subscribe. You will not be disappointed. And uh, please, please support my work, like I'd said. And if you'll notice that Excuse me, I have a Mastermind Challenge community. You're welcome to join it. Uh, that's a subscription only, but I also have a free version called the Everyday Miracles newsletter that you're able to join as well. And uh, you'll see that at my website. If you're at YouTube, the link to my website will be there in the description area down below and a lot of other goodies that I've got for you in the description area down below as well. So it's been nice today. I wish the best for you in life, in love, and all the success the world has to offer you. And I hope that you'll support me and stay behind me and continue to tune in to James Nussbaumer. I hope that you'll put my books in your home. And I hope that you will absorb them because I've put so much, so much deep, deep trueness of heart into what I write about. Hey, I got to go now. It's been great. I just love these podcasts. Until next time, James Nussbaumer signing off. God bless.